I was around in the middle 40s. See, I'm an old guy. But I'm not going to die till I get uh, something of a book written. And I want to get this. By the way, there's some great quotes. I don't know if you all saw this. This is uh, by one of your colleagues, uh, Chris Horner. This is a great book, The Politically Incorrect Guide to Global Warming. And a great scientific book. These books are just recently out, the last couple months. Here is a great book. I've, I've read most of it now, and a few of my colleagues have. Unstoppable Global Warming. And it's by um, Fred uh, Singer, uh, someone that's been fighting this whole thing for many years, and Dennis Avery. I recommend these two books highly if you want the other side of the coin. These are terrific books. And uh, anyways, I would, this is Time Magazine, the general view in 1945, when we, the war was coming to an end. We're in a warming period. Going to get dust bowls are coming, everything is going. Now, of course, it didn't happen. Here's a view out of Time Magazine, as you talked about. You talked about this. Here's the time cover. The big freeze is coming. This was 1977. Uh, I'm extrapolating. Here's uh, last year. We came this. Uh, this is to me irresponsible report from Time Magazine. This is they've come out with this special report on global warming. Be worried. Be very worried. The polar bears are are dying. Well, they've done studies, actually, there's more polar bears up in the north of Canada than there's been previously. I mean, things, facts just don't seem to, people look at data and they pick certain facts and they play around and they skew these facts in a certain way and write reports to scare people. It's terrible, and that makes headlines. Now the, now, the news media is at fault greatly with all this stuff. It doesn't make, if you look the data over and a reporter writes, well, I've looked at all the data, yeah, the globe's warmed a little bit, but there's other reasons for why it's warming. We're not, uh, humans are probably not involved with this, is what I think. You think that makes a good story for the press? No, they won't. Uh, so, now, here's my projection. I'm <laughs> 20 to 36. Burr, it's cold out there. Uh, so now, here's a few things. Uh, how much, is, here's a reader digest, February 73, when we've had this sort of a cooling period. Uh, <clears throat> Reports that the world's climatologists are agreed that we must prepare for the next ice age. Look, climatologists agree. Where have you heard climatologists agree previously? <laughs> Here's another one out of Newsweek, 75. In an article titled The Cooling World, said that meteorologists are almost unanimous that uh, catastrophic famines might result from global cooling. They're unanimous. Are they, aren't they unanimous now for one? Yeah. Now, I like, in a sense, with Michael Crichton, and I think if you have heard of Michael Crichton, he's a, he's a, a brilliant uh, writer, and he wrote that book, A State of Fear. And, and he's been to, uh, been to Congress and talked to that. But I haven't read the novel. I couldn't get through that. But I've read the last part of his book, 30, 40 pages, where he talks his points of view and stuff. And it's brilliant. He's also written a few other things. One I recommend. You can find it on the web. He says, Alien, uh, uh, he gave a Caltech lecture in 2003 called Aliens Cause Global Warming. It's the most beautiful lecture I've ever read. It's about 20 pages, and he comes up. Anyway, one of his things is, historically, the claim of consensus has been the first, not last, refuge of scoundrels is a way to avoid debate by claiming that the matter is already settled. 
Whenever you hear consensus of scientists agree on something or other, reach for your wallet, you're being had. I think that half applies very much to what we've seen on the global warming. Now, my predictions are that in uh, you know, the last 30 years of global warming is not going to keep on going. There's never been, the, uh, the atmosphere, the ocean just doesn't beat. There's no a sign that you can keep these warming, cooling trends just going, you know, decade after decade. <coughs> we, I think we're going to begin some modest cooling here. And I think uh, in 20 years from now, we're going to look back and the globe will be slightly cooling. And at the doubling of CO2, yes, I believe it will warm the globe a little bit, but nothing like what they say, not 2 to 5 degrees centigrade. That would be tremendous warming. It can't, this amount of CO2 doubling cannot do that because of, from an energy point of view, you see we have CO2, there's a percent or two of CO2, but much of the CO2 is redundant on water vapor. Water vapors are number one greenhouse gas. It dominates completely over CO2. And the only way CO2 can affect things is where there's a few radiation bands where the uh, Water, where the CO2 can absorb some energy uh, that goes out to space at water vapor cave. And the argument is if you double CO2, that's about four watts per square meter, is that difference. Mm -hmm. And I, I'll, uh, if you do it, uh, order of magnitude things, you see uh, that that probably can't uh, happen. Now, what has happened? We've had. Uh, there's a religion almost here in global in uh, modeling. 75% of our students at CSU are are modelers. 